In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. With me in the studio today is aging researcher Dr. Christoph Engler. Welcome to In Good Shape. Hello. We just saw the stories about the worms, but what do worms tell us about humans? I think they can tell us a lot. So experience over the last years um, on research in worms has shown that there were some principles discovered and probably also yet to be discovered, which are also applicable um, for, for human aging. Okay, but you yourself don't just do worms, you do research on some special kind of fish. So the worms are great, but the fish we think is at least as great. Uh, it has the advantage of being, in terms of evolution, in terms of conservation of certain pathways and genes, being more closer to the human situation. Uh, it's, uh, fish are vertebrates like uh, humans, so we think that whatever we discover in the fish might be even more relevant for human aging than what we discover in, in worms. Because they're closer to humans than the worms are. Because they're closer and the kind of the genes are more similar between a fish and a human rather than between a worm and a human. Um, yeah. But the best thing would be doing research on humans. So, but you don't do it because humans live too long? Well, it would be good to do research on humans in a way, but of course, yes, it's a species which is very long-lived. A PhD student has three to four years where he or she has to finish her experiment. Humans live up to 120. Obviously, you cannot do meaningful experiments with those in the lifetime of a scientist. When I speak to my patients in my office and I say, I want to grow old, I want to be old, they say um, they don't. Some of them, they, they don't because they're afraid of being old. So, so taking a look into Western society, it is that being old has some kind of stigma around this. What do you think about this? Yes, I think it's very unfortunate. Uh, you're right that in Western societies, um, it has a very negative connotation. Um, I think it's not good in Asian societies that is different, where people who are old are treated with respect, more respect than here. Um, this probably comes from what you said, from the fact that there is kind of a, a uh, inevitable um, relationship between coming old and becoming sick. However, there are examples, there are many examples of people who become became very old um, without being sick. And that's one of the goals that actually we have to make humans become old, but not necessarily become sick. So, so, so this is one of the goals you have as an age researcher? I think this is one of the main goals that uh, age research actually has. One is of course to decipher, to analyze the mechanisms which contribute to aging because we're still not really understanding that. We have no comprehensive view on what aging is actually, how it is brought about. So that is one um, goal and the other goal is to contribute to um, healthy human aging, to what we say usually to extend the health span, not necessarily the lifespan, but health span. Health span yeah, right. So, so, so what are the factors um, associated with the health span or the, 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 the lifespan? My grandma lived uh, until the age of 87. Does it mean that, that I can live that long too or can I even grow older? I think the fact that you have parents, grandparents in your um, family who actually became very old is already puts you in a good position uh, to become old yourself because we know that of course much of how long, uh, how we age and how old we can become is encoded in our genes. This does not ignore the fact that of course environment, behavior plays also a big role. Nevertheless, genes probably set the frame of maximum lifespan and whether you can actually um, get to this age, which is genetically predicted, this depends on your personal behavior, your um, diet, your activities. So I can do a lot of things wrong and shorten my lifespan, but can I do everything right and prolong it, even if my genes code that I would rather be 90 and not 100? I think this is going to be very difficult. So if you carry in you predisposition for certain diseases, this is something you will not or very hardly um, be able to overcome by behavior. There are diseases where you can uh, do a lot uh, to prevent or postpone them. Right. There are others which break out um, independent of what you do. We mentioned the telomeres. Um, what is the role of them and, and why do they play any role in aging? Well, the telomeres are the end of our chromosomes. These are kind of the packages of our genetic material. Um, we know that telomeres erode, they are shortened when we age. In fact, I have shorter telomeres than my PhD students. This is something, by the way, we have really tested and verified. So that's yes, normal. They, that's normal. You, that's normal. That's normal. And yeah. it's also almost inevitable 
uh, because there is no good way to prevent that uh, except you actually activate a particular enzyme called telomerase. However, that comes at a price because all tumor cells have telomerase activity. They manage to actually maintain or even elongate telomeres, but that uh, very often then leads to cancer. So in a so, way... So they can even reverse it? So yes, they, even, they can yeah. reverse it, so you even can elongate telomeres. This is done by this enzyme, um, which is required, needed for cancer. But is it like that, that, that you got a certain length of the telomeres and they got shortened over life and if they're gone, you die? Well, there, there's, there is a certain correlation between shortening of telomeres and onset of diseases. So heart cardiovascular diseases um, and so on and so forth. So right. yes, there is some link between shortening of telomeres and diseases. It's not totally clear whether really a person dies because one of the chromosomes was uh, actually too short. Too short. Um, sports is said to um, help the telomeres to stay longer. So is this true that sports has an anti-aging effect? I'm not sure that there's really good evidence. My view on that would be that somebody who does sport probably also in other aspects of his or her life lives a more conscious, a more healthy, a more balanced life. And I think that might actually help also or might counteract telomere shortening. I'm not sure that there is good evidence of sport and then how much sport actually leads to elongation of telomeres. So, so it's more the whole package. It's, it's I not believe the, it is. the time you, you spend running. We got a viewer question from Canada. Sean Walsh wants to know, how long will my life expectancy increase on average if I swim three to four times a week? As a scientist, I would say yeah. you should do that. You will benefit from that. I, I think... Um, this person will not only live a longer life, he will probably also live a more happy and more balanced life. And I think this is what is important. Um, we scientists cannot say by two kilometers, three kilometers per week, you can extend two years to your life. I think this is something which we cannot quantify yet. And, and what about dietary supplements? You can go into a pharmacy and buy some vitamins and they say you will look younger and you'll be younger if you eat them. I'm very um, skeptical about this. There are certain hypes always, you know, some vitamin is very popular in the 80s, 90s and then nobody talks about it. It then comes anti-cholesterol and then nobody talks about it later. So I've not really come across a, a good dietary supplement. Uh, I would say um, save the money and um, spend it more wisely. And what about caloric restriction? So not eating that much. That's what Tehan Mona from the US wants to know. Yes, there is good evidence in many species, in the mouse and in the worm we've talked about, that if you feed those animals with less calories, that that extends life. The problem is that still we don't know how that really works in detail. We are not totally sure whether this is applicable to humans. And also there are studies which people do not talk about so often, that dietary restriction in some mice can also shorten lifespan. So um, right. the overall message would be, yes, caloric restriction seems to reduce um, oh, sorry, to extend lifespan, to reduce also age-associated diseases. However, we really don't understand how it works exactly and whether it's applicable to humans. Okay, thank you, Professor Engler, for being with us in the studio. And one thing you can say is don't get obese because obesity shortens the lifespan. Certainly. Thanks thank so you. much for being with us and in good shape. Thank, thank you. you.